it being just after 20 past. Um, our next presenter submitted an extensive biography um, along with his presentation proposal. Uh, I'm just trying to find some of the true bits of it. Um, Adam is not a fan of magic quotes in PHP. Uh, he has a crippling t-shirt addiction. Uh, he contributes to PHP and writes tools for Gopher. Um, he's going to be talking about migrating to PHP 5.4. Uh, please make him welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, the microphone works. How exciting. Um, I don't want anyone to stress or worry. There is still time for all of us to go to the Arduino mini conf if you hurry. Don't let me stop you. Okay, so PHP 5.4 is coming out shortly and there are actually some backward incompatible changes after the excitement of 5.3 where we added things like namespaces and anonymous functions and various other things that grown up languages have had for about the last 15 years we decided to go back and start removing some of the cruft that had accumulated over that time so PHP 5.4 actually has a few things that you guys need to be aware of if you're taking your code and moving it forward that's a really good start there we go Okay, so we have removed a whole bunch of features. So I'm going to run through some of these features, the ones that will probably affect you more in practice, particularly if you've got legacy code kicking around. And I'll talk about things you can do to mitigate them. And in some cases, I've got both the bad option where I can show you the PHP code that will give you bug compatible um, parity with previous versions. And then I can show you what you should actually be doing. Of course, if you're on a budget or tight timeline, you'll probably just have to use the hack. So the very first one that we got rid of was Register Globals, which should have died about 10 years ago. But um, we did finally cut the cord. So for those of you who have actually been brought up on newer versions of PHP and have no idea what I'm talking about, you lucky things, what this actually was, was if you had a get parameter, like foo, you could actually just access it as the variable foo. As it turns out, this was a little bit of a problem. Because if you didn't initialize your variables first, somebody could send it a get variable like that, and then you're in all sorts of trouble. So the correct way of doing it, we added some super globals called get, post, request, and you should be accessing it through them. So register globals was a configuration variable that you could set in php.ini and that would allow the old behavior to still be there. That's now gone in PHP 5.4. If you try and turn it on, you'll get a startup error. Um, so if you actually really want to emulate that behavior in global scope, do that. More to the point, don't do that. The correct way to actually deal with this is to audit your code, fix your inputs, and also, if I can make a, an extra suggestion, don't use the request super global because you don't actually know where your data is coming from. And just to make matters more interesting, it's actually configurable in php.ini which variables go into request. You can actually configure it so that get and post variables don't go into the request super global. This can lead to really interesting bugs when you deploy on other people's servers. Another thing that we killed was magic quotes. Now, magic quotes is much more insidious and it's also been switched on by default right up until the current version of 5.3. What magic quotes does is given a get or post variable with single or double quotes in it, it will backslash escape that value. Now this was meant to be a convenience so that you could use string concatenation along with register globals to construct your database queries for say MySQL without actually needing to do any sort of escaping or sanitization. Clearly of course this is the sort of magic that was completely sane. <laughs> Basically all it does is implicitly it calls add slashes on each get and post variable which really doesn't work very well. But if you really want that behavior, this is how you can do it. You can just loop over the get, post, and cookie super globals. You can use the new anonymous function capabilities we added in 5.3, and you can actually add slash everything. Isn't that nice? Of course, the better option is use prepared queries via PDO or MySQLi if you're in the MySQL land. I'm going to digress into exactly why add slashes is actually evil, because a lot of people seem to still ask questions about it. Probably not this sort of crowd, but who knows, maybe somebody will see the video. 
Um, so database escaping in PHP, or more to the point MySQL database escaping in PHP. Of course there is a really easy solution to these problems which is don't use MySQL, but um, hopefully Arjen never hears that. Um, so in older versions of PHP, in ancient versions of PHP, add slashes was the preferred way of doing database escaping. Then we added MySQL escape string in those versions there. Then there was MySQL real escape string. <laughs> and then somewhere along the line we actually figured out that prepare queries were a good idea and nicked them from every other language. So the problem with add slashes and MySQL escape string in particular was to do with character sets. Not every character set actually encodes a backslash in the same place. Now MySQL is quite smart. It will actually look for the backslash in the correct place for whatever con connection character set you have. The problem is that if your connection character set is different from your input character set on your request, then you can end up in a situation where you can actually bypass a straight add slashes. So in most of the encodings Prolevity here is used to, it's at 5C. Therefore, if you escape a single quote, it's 5C27. But in Big 5 and many other encodings, 5C is actually the valid terminal for a multi-byte sequence. In this case, it's for this character here. Yeah. What that actually means is that if you send this query string, and you, all you do is call add slashes, your query ends up looking something like this. <laughs> you will note, this doesn't work, you will note <laughs> that that is not actually an escape character. I believe it's actually a funereal shroud made from hemp, but if somebody wants to double check that and get back to me, I would more than welcome that. So the moral of the story is use prepared queries. If you can't use prepared queries for some reason, I, I don't actually have a legitimate reason why you wouldn't be able to at this point, but if you can't, at least use MySQL real escape string because it will actually look at the connection character set. Another thing that has been killed is safe mode, which I said when I did this talk last year is half correct because it is in fact a mode. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's approximately as safe as this dance. What safe mode actually did was very simple. It restricted the, file, the access you had from your scripts to files by the owning user ID of the script. The problem with this is that it was actually ridiculously easy to circumvent. Third party extensions weren't bound by safe mode. Um, there were bits of PHP that weren't bound by safe mode. You had to, or every, every bit of PHP that touched a file had to be audited to actually make sure that it did the safe mode restriction correctly and it just turned out really that in general it the problem was people tend to assume that that actually works and it's secure because it's documented in the manual and the manual looks really trustworthy unfortunately that's not always true so there were ways to get around it the problem is fundamentally PHP is not actually the right level to do this at. So the alternatives you'll note aren't actually in PHP. So there's mod ITK which is an Apache module which does interesting things. There's SUPHP which is another Apache module. If you're running fast CGI which is probably actually the best way to do this then you can actually use PHP fa um, fast CGI process manager which is now bundled in PHP and it does have some configuration options to be able to set this on a user by user and directory by directory basis in terms of what user PHP should be running as for that user. Turns out that when you cooperate with your operating system's permissions it actually works. Another thing that's changed is the session API but again only if you've been using very outdated code that looks something like this. So there are these functions called session register, session is, is registered and session unregister which go into the actual function scope that you're calling them from and pull variables out and manipulate them. Instead there's the much less magic session soup global which you should be using. You'll note that the code is also actually simpler because it just uses is set and unset like everything else to do with variables. And the other major thing that's changed is SQLite. Now, since version 5, PHP has bundled SQLite 2, both as a library and an API to that. The problem with that is that SQLite 2 hasn't actually had a release since 2005. Um, there is a bit of a laundry list of security issues with it at this point and it's probably only, we've probably only gotten away with it because of the fact that very few people actually use SQLite in anger in the real world. Most people just use MySQL because their hosting comes with it. 
The good news is that migrating the API is not all that difficult. So here's an incredibly simple script written against SQLite 2, which just selects from a table, fetches the first row, and doesn't really give you any diagnostics if it fails. Um, the fact that it's not actually just dying or ignoring the false already means it's ahead of about 80% of tutorials out there. So you'll note if you watch carefully in SQLite 3, even though it's an object-oriented API, it doesn't actually change very much. So you create an SQLite 3 object, you call a query method, and you fetch the array. It's not all that difficult. So if you've got SQLite 2 code, migration should not be terrifying. Somebody could probably actually write an automated tool if they really wanted, wanted to. There's also the PDO option, of course, which looks fairly similar because PDO has a fairly similar OO API. I'd probably actually use PDO if you have a choice, but you may not, depending on your hosting configuration. Call time passed by reference. So in PHP 4, you could do things like this, where you could actually pass in a reference to a variable at call time without the function actually necessarily expecting a reference. This was a really good way to create interesting side effect bugs. It was also a really good way to segfault PHP for a long time as well. So what we've done is you now actually have to specify in the function prototype that it accepts a reference. So you just note, sorry, that the ampersand has just gone from the actual call up to the declaration. All there is to it. And you get the correct meaning of life. Time zones. Who here's seen this message? Yeah. <laughs> Most of you. Um, if you don't set the date time zone configuration variable in the php.ini, you get this message. In, older ver in well, all the current versions of PHP, PHP will attempt to guess what your current time zone is. This is hilariously broken, particularly on Windows. So PHP no longer guesses. You actually get UTC by default now, whether you like it or not. You also get a slightly longer version of this message because apparently it wasn't long enough and verbose enough already. Um, the correct way to fix this, of course, is either to set it in your php.ini or just call date default time zone set at the top of your script. There are a few gotchas in terms of moving code forward too, and just other things that you'll need to be aware of. Uh, the default character set, which is also something that's controlled in php.ini and controls the content type response header unless you override it with a header call, is now set to UTF-8 by default. Um, it was set to ISO 88591. The reason for this is because it turns out that a lot of people were actually sending UTF-8 content anyway and then were wondering why there were these A's with tildes above all over their pages. So if you do actually need ISO 88591 in your application that you're migrating to PHP 5.4, you do now actually need to send a header and I've just realised I put the wrong header there. That actually should have been ISO 88591 at the end. Sorry. Uh, the EOL error level now includes strict warnings and deprecation messages because, yes, until PHP 5.4, the error level all did not actually include all errors. This is emblematic of PHP. <laughs> Crypt um, had a little backward incompatible change which in practice probably won't affect anyone. Um, there was a sign extension bug in Blowfish mode in Crypt for people who had passwords with the byte 255 only. That byte actually doesn't, is invalid in all, um, all, all UTF-8 sequences and since every browser for about the last 10 years has sent forms as UTF-8 by default, in practice it's really unlikely anyone's actually affected by this. But if you're doing authentication some other way than a web form, then you, I don't know, maybe it might come up. Um, if you really need the old buggy behaviour, instead of using 2a as your prefix, use 2x and you'll get behaviour that's consistent with the previous versions of PHP. Other gotchas, MySQL extensions now built with the native driver by default rather than your system's libMySQL. And contrary to previous advertisement, APC will not be bundled with PHP 5.4 because mostly it's just not ready at the moment. It may come in later in 5.4. Deprecated features. There aren't that many. Um, eReg was supposed to go, the old POSIX-based regular expression library was supposed to go in 5.4. It survived because there are still bits of PHP internally that rely on it, um, but it's still really deprecated and we would recommend strongly that you move to the uh, Perl compatible extension at some point, so PREG match or PREG replace. Um, 
The MySQL extension, the, the old one that you've been using since PHP 4, um, is also now self-deprecated, which means that it won't actually generate any deprecation warnings when you run code with it but it will be say it's deprecated in the manual. The reason for this is that it's really going to be deprecated in PHP 5.5 and this is going to terrify the pants off people so we're just trying to ease them into it really, really gently. On the bright side, this is going to break about 90% of the really terrible tutorials on the internet so I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to really quickly rip through a few new features that have been added as well. We're not just breaking your code, we're actually adding some new ways you can use PHP as well. We've added traits, which if you've used Scala, you'll already be familiar with. If you haven't used Scala, they're pretty similar to mix-ins. Um, so it allows you to reuse methods and also properties as well across classes without actually needing to inherit from objects. Or you can think of it as effectively the compiler doing a big control C on the methods in your trait and control Ving them into your class. In actual fact, you can definitely think of it like that because internally that's exactly what happens. So for example, if you have a trait here with just a function that echoes hello and you have a class that uses that trait, what the compiler actually does is it generates opcodes that are exactly the same as if you had just had a class defined like that. You can also use multiple traits at the same time in a class and there are many, many other features. As you can see, calling basically works the same way because as I just said, it's effectively the same as that. So we can still just create a greet or object, call hello, and we get hello. I won't dwell on this mostly because I'm running out of time and there's a lot of documentation in the manual. There are a lot of hidden features in there and a lot of hidden power and I'm really interested to see how people use this over the next few years because I think it's going to change the way people write frameworks in particular. You can also now rebind closures. So given a couple of classes, in PHP 5.3 you can't use the this variable in a closure at all. So what you can now do is you can actually at runtime bind a closure to an, to an instance of an object. So we've generated a closure here. Now we're going to generate a bound version to a greeter, which says hello, and we're going to bind the same closure to a fareweller, which says goodbye, and then we're going to call those closures. And that will call the say method on those classes, and it will generate hello, goodbye. There are some parser improvements as well, which seem to excite people. You can now do this. I'm sorry it took that long. <laughs> you can also now declare arrays with square brackets, but with a catch, the separator between keys and values is still um, the, what do the Ruby people call that, the rocket ship? Hash rocket. Yeah, hash rocket. Um, you can also instantiate and call methods on objects directly, and I think that's probably actually the one legitimate use of it with uh, date time. Speed 5.4 is a bit quicker. I haven't had time to rerun the benchmarks, but I'm told it's about the same on the current RC. Uh, most frameworks should be a few percent faster. Most code should be a few percent faster. You get this for free without doing anything. You will note that there is a red delta over there for Joomla. Are there any Joomla developers in the room? Am I going to offend anyone? What a shame. Um, <laughs> the reason for that is because Joomla now generates a truly ridiculous number of deprecation warnings. Um, and pretty much the slow path when running PHP code is the error code. So I think it worked out, I think I actually did the math, I think it was something like 2,000 warnings on just the default home page on a default install. So that slows it down, funnily enough. Part, other improvements, uh, the short open echo tag is always available. You get binary literals for the three people who are actually using PHP to do something with binary. Uh, you get a callable type hint, which works exactly like the array type hint, just for closures and callables. It works exactly the same way as callables internally, so it's the same as anything you've given to an array map or anything like that. So I guess the big question remaining is when you will actually get all of this. The answer is soon, but maybe not soon enough. Originally it was supposed to be out in November, uh, then it was December, uh, now we're in January. Um, yeah, RC5 came out on Saturday the 7th. The next release is due this Thursday. It will be a release candidate. We're not ready for a final. Um, we, PHP 5.5 will be branched at some point after 5.4 comes out. 
What we really need at this point is just people to keep really hammering these release candidates because as I said, we're coming up towards the sixth release candidate and things just keep trickling in that are causing problems. So what we really need, and feel free to go tell your fellow PHP developers where you work and where you live, test the RC, make, run make test, raise issues for things you find, send make test results. It's really easy. Um, it's on qa.php.net. There are all the instructions there and we could really use the help at this point because we'd like to get this release out at some point this year. So, that's about it. I think I've got approximately 90 seconds for questions. Oh, we'll give it slightly <laughs> longer. Questions for Adam. Oh. Uh, you said that the short echo tag was more available. What does that mean? Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, always available. Um, so, the short echo tag, let me see if I can find, there we go. Okay, so, PHP has short tags, so short open tags, so you can just go um, open, open thingo, less than sign, question mark, um, which you can turn on optionally in php.ini. One of the things that that also controlled was this little thing here, which basically is equivalent to um, opening a PHP tag and then going echo whatever comes after it. Um, the reason why short tags are optional in the first place is because if you have short tags turned on and then you have an XML declaration, then that basically causes parse errors. So, but that actual short echo tag doesn't conflict with any processor instructions. So we've just taken it out of the setting now. It's always available. You can always use it. This should make template code much nicer. Cool. Anyone else want to ask a question about PHP 5.4? You can ask about earlier versions of PHP if you really like. You can also harass Adam as much as you like. <laughs> Nobody wants to, apparently. Uh, we've got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> can you use um, PHP for Gopher? Yes, you can. Um, uh, I will give you my GitHub page <laughs> later, and there is a stream implementation, I think, up there. Uh, when do you think we'll get APC? I'm hopeful that we'll actually get it in by default in five, somewhere in the 5.4. Um, because it's not going to break any backward compatibility, um, it's one of those things that we should be able to roll in down the track, much as FPM came in during 5.3, I think before 5.3.3. Um, the reason why it's not in at the moment is just it's still a little bit crashy with traits. So that, that was... It was kind of a case of do we delay it until the couple of people who really know APC well have time to actually deal with this and they're busy men, or do we, do we actually get 5.4 out and come back to it in a couple of months? So we're going to get 5.4 out and come back to it, basically. Um, but I'm hopeful it'll come into 5.4. It'll definitely be, be in by 5.5, but I'm, I'm hopeful for 5.4. It should also, I'm told actually the latest beta is not as crashy with traits, so hopefully APC will also separately have a stable release out quite soon that works with 5.4. Are we likely to see type hinting for primitives in the near future? <laughs> um, okay, type hinting, so PHP has type hinting for parameters in function prototypes at the moment for objects, for arrays, and now for callbacks. The reason why you don't have type hinting for uh, primitives at the moment is because nobody can actually agree on what they should do. Um, <laughs> The two options that are on the table, just to lay it out, because this, this came up during the 5.4 RFC process. The options that are on the table are either, okay, so say you've got an integer type in and you give a string, a, a string that actually is a number, a numeric string to it. The options are you can either blow up because it's not an integer or you can implicitly coerce it to an integer if possible, otherwise blow up. Um, it turns out that we actually did do a vote on this. It turns out the PHP core development team is exactly split 50-50 on, on which way this should go. So it's been shelved for the time being. That There are proposals coming up for maybe alternative syntaxes to allow you to do both, although that seems really pearly, um, and I don't mean that as a nice thing, just since it's not still here, right? Um, but it, it, in theory, I think most people actually want it. In practice, it's what it actually does, because You've also got to have this in light of the fact that PHP is, of course, weakly typed as a language. So whether it should coerce or not is kind of a deeper philosophical question than it turns out no two people can agree on. So, so maybe <laughs> is the really short answer. All right. Any more questions so that Adam can insult every other language that exists? <laughs> I haven't managed to do Python yet, so if anybody oh, wants to ask anything. <laughs> this will just turn his microphone off there. <laughs> 
I, I don't have the switch. It's uh, Jeremy up the back. It's all right. Jeremy will turn me off, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so if there are no more questions, um, please thank Adam.